Skitty poppity boop. This is the Wild Times podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what is it called? The Wild Times. Wild Times. So I say, Patrick, give me your shirt. So Patrick, in a flash, rips off his shirt. Looks great. What do you feed your dog besides your own dick? Wild Times. What is the Wild Times to you, Forrest Galante? Guys, this is the Wild Times podcast. It is a podcast for people that like the outdoors, adventure, wildlife, and a good laugh among bros. Love all of those things. Yeah. Will we touch on such things as current events, uh, science, stuff like that, or are we going to ignore all that shit? Funny you should ask, Patrick, because those are the exact topics we will, in fact, <laughs> be discussing. Want to listen to it? Weird that it doesn't exist. Sounds like a great podcast. I think we should do it. Let's do it right now. Skip to Welcome the to the Wild Time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got a couple of my buddies together here. I've got Ritep. What's Hello. up, Ritep? Hey, how you guys doing? <laughs> Uh, we're great, <laughs> we're sir. Good. Yeah. How are, yeah. And that other sexy voice that you're hearing is my longtime buddy, executive producer of Extinct or Alive, my travel friend, Mr. Patrick DeLuca. Yep. Pretty excited. Going to talk a lot of Wild Times type stuff. Anyway, yeah, I'm Patrick. Who the fuck are you, man? That's a good point. <laughs> I here am Forrest Galante, adventurer, <laughs> wildlife biologist, and bros as well with Patrick and Awesome. Princess. Thanks for saying that. Hey, we're in uh, our studio, Forest's Garage. Indeed. Pretty awesome. It's a good uh, office. It's more of an o- yeah, an office. It is. Your wife fucking did this whole thing. What, the garage, is. it's funny. It's on the same property as your house. Yep. And your fucking farm that has donkeys, pigs, a full, huge pen of Flemish rabbits. Flemish giant rabbits. They and they are huge. We have the worst as a dog. We have the worst animals. We have giant rabbits and tiny chickens. It makes no sense. (laughs) I need to reverse my animals. Those pigs, though. Perfectly sized pigs, if I do say so. Those pigs. (laughs) Those pigs. So, Forrest and I, uh, obviously, Ritep is not qualified or physically able to, but (laughs) Forrest and I go on a lot of adventures. Forrest show, Extinct or Alive. And we have a lot of time on long drives and long talks to talk shit. And we talk about animals and biology because we're nerds. Do you remember Lion Man? Lion Man. Lion Man. So we were on a chase for the Cape Lion in Zimbabwe. And we had a lead on a massive black mane lion that we believed had Cape Lion DNA. Now, for those that don't know, the Cape Lion is an animal that went extinct um, because it was trophy hunted, because it was such a big, massive black mane lion that it used to hunt and kill elephants. Bigger right? than current lions. Yes, way bigger. One third larger and more powerful than regular lions. Huge paws, huge black mane, just a massive creature. So the most terrifying animal period. in existence. Okay. Yeah. Patrick DeLuca yes. asked me if we managed to find a cape lion and tranquilize it and pull blood from it. And, I, and we didn't have the permits in time. How would I get the blood back to the United States to get analyzed? And I said, well, we'll, we'll have the permits in time, Patrick. Relax. He said, well, what if we don't? I said, well, naturally, I, I will keister the lion blood. <laughs> what, if, Ritep, what is your understanding of to keister something? That's a, I mean, I, I think you're saying that you would stick like a vial of blood up your, your anus, right? Spot on. <laughs> you were going to, legitimately, though, you were serious. You were going to put a vial of extinct lion blood up your anus. These are trying times, Deluca. <laughs> we, <laughs> he wanted we, to do it. He yeah. was ready to do it. But I mean, le- let's digress <laughs> right. into yeah. what you imagined would happen if said vial were to shatter. It's in... what would have happened. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> you would have planted your fat ass on the plane seat. Indeed. Said vial of lion blood would have shattered. Right. And your, <laughs> your anus <laughs> would have absorbed the cape lion blood and you would have turned into lion man right and lion man is naturally <laughs> he's a superhero who has the powers of a lion but the charming good looks of a man yeah. you're already kind of that i feel like forrest has that going for him already <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i haven't even keistered anything since yesterday <laughs> that brings me to our next segment battle royale i think this is going to be a fun segment we're going to try doing this every week we'll see but I like it. right now the idea is this we all did this as kids you take three animals. Yep. You build your ultimate fucking warrior. Yep. Pit them against each other. So it's the body of this, the head of this, the legs of this, the tail of this. Right. Forrest, talk about what's going to happen here. So here's what we're going to ask you to do. Leave us a review, and in the comments, you're going to say whose animal would win and why. We are randomly going to pick one winner, 
and they're going to win a $100 gift certificate to Cool. That's K-U-H-L, Cool. Make the world's best outdoor gear. You're not going to want to miss it, and you're going to want to vote for me because I'm the guy who gives away the gift cards. No, nah, they will so. be randomly picked. <laughs> Random <laughs> Randomly picked. Uh, but yeah, do us a favor on iTunes, leave us a review, and say whose animal, whose creature would win, and Forrest is going to hook you up with a hundred dollar gift certificate to get some awesome shit from kuhl cool Ritab, let's get your animal let's hear it well so i think that my animal is definitely going to um be venomous so i, I want it to have like the head of a uh a very venomous viper snake right so it's gonna ha- what no i like it it's is, very is it? specific yeah, yeah it's gonna it's so so imagine my animal has the head of a viper snake right? okay so it's its head is two inches long cool. and i want it to be able to fly right my animal has to be able to fly but it needs to be able to fly silently and Ooh. the only bird that can fly silently is an owl so it has so the got- head of a viper very poisonous, small head. Venomous. If also you will. small body, because it's an Obese owl. Obese body. <laughs> <laughs> but but silent, silent predator. And then what's the third characteristic? <clears throat> well, that would I guess be of like this <laughs> tiny, adorable animal. <laughs> All right. It's I'm, got a tiny viper head. <laughs> yes. A small it, obese. O- overall, owl body. right now, this is a puntable six inch tall it's, animal. No, no, it's okay, a yeah, but it can fly. You won't hear it coming, dude. It'll just bite you right on the neck and fly yeah, away silently. So he's made a bat. So Hold far. on though. No. It's got Let's continue. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. You made a bat. <laughs> you better put this thing on a fucking no, elephant. You body. guys, the third characteristic is what's going to truly differentiate this from a bat. Mm-hmm. It's got a nuke attached to the back of it. That's, That's not, not an, an animal. animal. Just kidding. <laughs> Calm down. Jesus. Calm down. I wanted to see if it would fly. All right. Uh, well, All right. It's got a tail. Okay. A rat sized tail, but it's needlepoint sharp. This is the worst animal I've well, ever... Well, that's my animal. <laughs> Deal with it. All right. If you vote for me, I'll give you an extra $100 okay. in cash. So Retep made... It's an owl's body and wings and it right. can fly. It has a <laughs> one and a half inch long viper's Very head. venomous fangs. And it has a pin sharp rat tail. Well, yes. It's, it's a very sharp tail the size of a rat's tail. I didn't know but that we could... But it flies silently. You keep forgetting to add okay. that. It's a that's, silent predator. That's going to have a tough time with mine. Nah, it's going to destroy yours. <laughs> and so would a, a hefty gust of wind would destroy yours. Nah, <laughs> this is going to be an obese owl. No a tennis wind. racket would destroy yeah, yours. So your, your little two foot long, 18 pound animal is mm. going to have a tough time with mine. And I'm going against a buffoon and a biologist, <laughs> and I'm confident mine's going to win. Let's start with an elephant's body. Smart. It's Stocky, big, strong, strong. It definitely will capable stamp. of killing an owl viper. <laughs> yeah, not, not if it's flying from above, dude. Okay, elephants are afraid of mice. By Come the way, on, Forrest Mine's got a rat tail, needle sharp. Hang on, quick question, Forrest. Could a viper kill a full-grown bull elephant? It probably couldn't even penetrate the skin. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. So I've already a rat's beat you. needle tail could. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm. I've got an elephant's a bull elephant's body, an African okay. bull elephant. Good. It will stomp on you. It is huge. It is stocky. Unless you're flying, but yeah. Guess what's going on up top? A giraffe's neck. Wow. <laughs> um, if wow. you haven't seen a giraffe swing its neck at someone or something, it uh, is terrifying. Uh, it extends the body up another 8 to 10 feet. It's not even a match so far. Carry on. Attached to the neck is the head and face of a great white shark. Wow. <laughs> yeah. This how is a terrifying gonna, animal. How are you going to contend with that for us? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Ratep's animal is ludicrous and buffoonish. Dude, but my, your animals I, will be fighting each I, other. You Mine's still going to be flying around. You created a bat with a rat's tail. <laughs> carry, carry on. We'll see We'll see who wins in the end, who will be victorious. Remember, extra 100. You might you get vote the sympathy me. vote. <laughs> uh. All right, Forrest, who does not decide, you will be randomly chosen for the gift card <laughs> provided by Forrest. What's your uh, biologically awesome animal scientist guy? Okay, so here's what I'm going to go for. It's it's not a it's not a bat with a slightly sharpened tail. <laughs> it's, it's, Needle not, sharp, it's not mate. an elephant Needle. with a head so heavy that it couldn't lift it off of the ground. <laughs> okay, fair. <laughs> it is, Good point. I'm going gorilla body. Nice. Smart. Very strong, large, aggressive. I'm going to put a rhinoceros' head on that. Oh, boy. Mm. Yep. Very protected armor. Yep. Yeah, armored head. It's got a, got a facial horn. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're familiar with this. <laughs> it's got a nice dick growing out of his nose. <laughs> and I'm going to put this on giraffe legs. 
Wait, why giraffe legs? Ooh. They're not that tall. What? <laughs> All right, go on. Are they? <laughs> Why would you say that? That's the Their only neck, thing they're known their for. Their necks are tall. They're, they have long Dude, necks. Their legs are can, not tall. They're as tall as any other Are animals. you picturing a bulldog? Listen, yeah. your, your great white, white shark on a giraffe's you, neck, it can't even lift its head up. You know the difference between a tortoise Dude, and a my, giraffe. My silent owl bat is going to be poking Wait, the Forrest, shit out I'm of your... I'm concerned that the rhino head and the, the gorilla body are going to crumble those little stick this is, legs this is a valid this is a valid point but so is so so is great white shark head and, on and uh, you know, on giraffe neck my bat owl is he's getting going, angry for us he is, do you see to, it do you see his teeth starting to, uh, yeah. to connect it's going to Jesus. spit poison at both of your why horrific... are you speaking through your teeth right yeah, now yeah you look like a staffordshire terrier sir <laughs> so have you guys seen this the coyote and the badger in san francisco you know what I'm talking about? First of all, I didn't know that badgers. There are badgers in San Francisco. There are, what and, is... and they're not just hairy gay guys on uh, Polk Street. <laughs> it's, it's a real thing. Um, so, we have more, so, so let me dig into this for a second. This went viral this week. Yeah, it is this incredible video footage. It's from a trail camera, one of my favorite tools. Yep, of a North American badger and a coyote, and it shows that they are working in unison. But it's not just that they're working in unison. The coyote is showing this incredible piece of playful body language where it's almost like a Disney film. He's looking over his shoulder and saying, come on, bud, this way, come right, through this right. tunnel. Yeah. And then he coaxes this badger, this North American badger, who kind of grumpily and slowly catches up to the coyote <laughs> and enters into this dark tunnel with his cute little butt in the air. I mean, it's unbelievably adorable. Watching it, the video, they're undeniably best friends. They're best friends oh, yeah. forever. It, it's like the the uh, the new version of Timon and Pumbaa, right there. Dude, it's, <laughs> this is like a Disney. This is like an Ice Age type Disney movie of two animals of completely different species playing together in a sewage tunnel. Well, so now watching the video, the uh, coyote is is pretty young. So is it just because he's young? Like, would a grown coyote ever do that, or am I nuts? How uh, do you know it's young, dummy? No, it just looks small. I, I <laughs> so I equate. So I think young. I think you're mistaking a small coyote for a big badger. That's okay. that's not necessarily a young coyote. It's a okay. full grown adult coyote. Okay. I think what so what what the thing that I find fascinating here is the interspecies relationship, right? right. So. There is a reason these animals are doing this. This isn't just for pure joy. It isn't for fun. It isn't because they're trying to star in their own Pixar movie. <laughs> it's because it's because these animals are sympatric. And what that means is they, they will work together for a greater good. Now, what the understanding is, and I'd have to double check all of this because this is all new science, which is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. But the understanding is that the coyote, the badgers will go down into holes and root around and scare stuff out. And then the coyote will pounce on it and kill it, and then they'll share the meal. Do you think they share evenly? I think it's kind of a gobble fest. It's like whoever gets down the most, the quickest. <laughs> right. They work symbiotically until the food is actually in front of them. And right. Then sure. They're like us at Thanksgiving when the meal first comes <laughs> yeah, out. It's like two frat guys with a bag of Taco Bell late at night. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it is super cool because coyotes are so fucking smart. You know there's a, a, a pack of coyotes living in uh, Skid Row. Really? No. What? I did not know this. They, downtown? Living, yeah, they're living in Skid Row in downtown LA. They're eating a diet mostly comprised of fruit that they're getting from a grocery store dumpster. Wow. Um, and they've learned to cross the streets by listening to the the noise. So there's a, in LA, there's a noise that comes that tells you it's okay to cross for people that are blind. Mm -hmm. This pack of coyotes will cross the street together. They wait at red lights and cross when it's safe. Unbelievable. Now, do you think that the coyotes are working with the homeless people to to uh, get food? What? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> All right. Edit. I'm sorry, Forrest. No, that's staying in. That is not getting edited. They're, they're working symbiotically to kill and eat food with the badger. I mean, how did that go over both of your heads? I mean, it didn't right. land. Yeah. All right. I, I'm not so, the funny one so, <laughs> or the interesting one. <laughs> but you're here. And that's yes, awesome. the Exactly. I'm the one that's cute. here. Uh, so here's what's amazing about coyotes, going back to what we just said a second ago. They're eating a diet of mostly fruit. Yeah. These are animals that are scrutinized across the country, right? Hunters shoot them for fun. We've been targeting. We poison them, everything. And one thing that we've seen in their population is they always bounce back to a sustainable level. They can live in downtown cities. They live in Chicago. They live in Los Angeles. They live in San Francisco. They can eat fruit. They can eat rodents. They can eat cattle. 
I mean, they're amazing, adaptable animals. And no matter what we've done to try and eradicate them, their population has somehow sustained healthy levels, which is incredible. They've been able to just fill the biological niche no matter what that niche is. That's adaptable. interesting, but they're they're very cute, right? Coyotes very. are very cute. Um, and they're adaptable and smart. Yep. I'm actually really surprised. Like, why can't they be domesticated? That's a good question. They're they're kind of a superior wolf in a way. The wolf's yeah. bigger and stronger. They're they're more social. But the coyote is solitary, and I think that leads to why they can't be domesticated. Right. Mm. So uh, most dogs are der- are derivatives of wolves. Right. Wolves right. are pack animals. So when you bring an animal, a dog, in. It is looking for an apex. It's looking for an alpha. It's looking for a beta. It's going to be the beta or the omega, Mm -hmm. and it will follow your lead. A solitary animal brought into that environment is not used to those social dynamics. It doesn't know to respect the alpha. It doesn't know to work as an omega. It doesn't know that it belongs Mm. as a beta. So instead, it challenges. It cowers in fear. If you discipline it the way an alpha would discipline a beta— it doesn't know why it's being disciplined. It gotcha. just thinks it's being abused. Right. So an animal with that kind of social, solitary social structure does not make for a good pet. That's mm-hmm. interesting. Which sort of, you know, it's a big part of the difference between cats and dogs, right? That's totally. why everyone loves dogs and most people despise <laughs> cats more than anything. <laughs> totally. I love cats. But they're, you know, cats are, it's the same thing, right? That's why they're so independent and will just stick their ass in the air and walk away from you without <laughs> right. thinking twice about it. Right. They don't need you. Well, they, but, Coyote but, doesn't need you either. Oh, it's right. so frustrating because they're so cute. I want them to need me <laughs> more than anything. The thing I love about cats is that they will come up to you purring, just butting their little head into your hand, and then you look at the TV and they will bite you as hard as they can for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> and I love that about my cat. So so can I? let's talk about cat behavior for a second here. And Please. All cats... Here's a statement that's going to get people upset. <laughs> yes, it is. All cats are the same animal, and and Go he, on. and here's why. This is from this is personal anecdotal evidence. You remember the meat tree in Zanzibar? I sure do. You, how could you forget it? We built a whole tree, of, a thirty foot tall tree of meat, <laughs> a, a, a kitty cat's playground. Yeah, if you will. So so check this out, Rateb. When, yeah. When Patrick and I were in Zanzibar, the first ever extinct animal that we ever tracked down. This was concocted by Patrick and I at about one in the morning on our probably eighth night of trying everything humanly possible (laughs) to try and find this leopard that I don't think either of us even actually thought existed at that point in time. It's an extinct leopard. Right. 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 Extinct leopard. Yeah. And so we We had a few white claws. We had many, (laughs) many drinks. And we came up with this idea based on Patrick's cat to create a giant (laughs) kitty cat play toy Filled with dangling toys that were also edible. So we decided to buy 300 pounds of goat and cow meat at the meat market and find a broken down tree and dangle all these bits from it. Dude, we were in the hotel room. We were talking, you know, we started talking about it. And we we had been drinking because I think maybe the next day was supposed to be our our cruise off day. Right. Um, We come up with this idea for the meat tree. Mm -hmm. We're howling laughing yeah <laughs> and how fucking stupid it is we're like this is insane are yeah. we really gonna do it yeah we're gonna do it i mean it does yeah. sound like as you're explaining it it sounds completely nuts like like did you have to justify that to the just, to just, production just put the word no. well we are production we are <laughs> okay yeah. gotcha. but also what we did was we walked around <laughs> we were this this night because the next day was the off day we had gotten a hotel right mm-hmm. um and so we were forced and i walked around the hotel room knocked on every person on the crew's doors and said, tomorrow's not an off day now. Yeah. We're building a meat tree. And, and just put the words meat tree in your pocket for a second. Yeah, right. This is what we kept saying. We didn't explain it to anybody. We just had this idea and we said, tomorrow's meat tree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, meat tree tomorrow. Meet us sometime. <laughs> and okay. it worked. I That's was going to say, incredible. I mean, like, it, it worked. It worked. Well, the funny thing is, I guess it didn't actually work the way we quite anticipated no. it to. No, it didn't. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So now what happened? So we built this meat tree. It took us all night. Like, yeah. I, I think we started like four in the afternoon. We were done around, like, what was it, like midnight by the yeah. time we were done? It took half the night. We were hanging pound after pound of meat from all these strings. It was it was the most graphic, <laughs> cryptic thing. Jeez. I mean, it was nuts. Yeah. And, and we, we peppered the area with trail cameras. And we were like, all right, if anything's going to happen... You know, look, there was real science behind this. We're like, you know, we're going to put the air... <laughs> yeah, the, white the claw. Meat, <laughs> right. We're going to put the meat off the ground so that the scent can travel further. You know, we're going to dangle it so that it's visually attractive. But who knows what the hell's going to happen. 
Well, it turned out we ended up catching an image of this leopard on one of our trail cameras that was pointed in the complete opposite direction, <laughs> nice. nowhere near the meat tree. Nice, but it smelled the meat, clearly. Good. I mean, that's the only mm-hmm. reason it came over. Let's be real. We, we, it, so the, the camera that caught it was sort of a joke camera. Like, we just put it up to get some shots of your hands putting up a trail camera, yep. essentially. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, it was pretty close to the parking area it was yeah so the meat tree was like two or three miles of like bushwhacking hike into the middle of this fucking jungle right Right. and we catch an extinct zanzibar leopard on camera uh i believe with a bag of cheetos in its mouth that had taken out of the dumpster are you kidding me it really had cheetos in its mouth no but it was it was close to an area where where a lot of humans uh had, had traveled and it was fucking bonkers because you know i was talking to mitch our forest camera guy and we were like dude I've spent like five nights just like walking through this jungle by myself. There's right. a fucking leopard <laughs> right. in this right. jungle. <laughs> I don't know if you know much about leopards, but they are one of the they're one of the only animals that will actively hunt humans. Right. Absolutely. Right. True. It will kill you. Absolutely true. Right. Yep. But like yeah. there are leopards in India that are famous that have names that yep. killed over a hundred humans. There's only a handful of species that have ever been declared true man eaters, and that means they have, you know. They have developed a taste for human flesh, and leopards are one of them. Wow. Like you said, there was one notable one, I'm blanking on his name right now, that had killed over 100 people out of a village in India. It would sneak into their huts at night and drag people from their beds, take them up a tree and eat them. Dude, we recently got back from uh, a trip. We met these local guys, and they were going to take us to see what they claimed was this area where this uh, animal called the Saolo lived. Right? The, the Saolo. Uh, Saolo. How do you say it? Saola. Saola. So they were going to take us to this area, these local hunters, uh, deep into the jungle to see this area where they said there were Saola. And we were, you know, c- kind of trying to be friends with them. And they were, it was a little touch and go. And they said, well, come out with us tonight. And right. then we'll go into the jungle. Uh, so we thought, Sure. Of course, yeah. 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 Obvi- Why obviously. not? Yeah. We didn't know that two hours later we were going to be at a karaoke bar <laughs> where they were uh, doing nitrous balloons. <laughs> and high on nitrous, they were asking us to try and climb across the water pipes at the top That's of right. the ceiling That's right. to yeah. get from the stage where you do karaoke to the door. The floor is lava, but cranked up to level 1,000. So essentially, you guys thought that you were going on like a wild jungle nighttime exotic adventure, and you basically ended up at the equivalent of your hometown bar when you were 21. No, we had oh, to, this is we no had to do bar. this. <laughs> we had to do this so that they would take us into the jungle. Yeah. This was the test? It seemed that way. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, you got me now. Now I'm curious. Now, now I don't yeah. know if you've ever taken a face full of nitrous balloon and tried to hang from the water pipe <laughs> rafters. Never hung from rafters, but absolutely taken it's, balloons. It's quite something. So yeah. it's like 13 feet out. So it's like, if you fall, you're probably going to hurt your ankle real bad. Right, right. They were like insistent that all of us took these massive nitrous balloons and, and then tried this quest to get from the stage to the door 13 <laughs> feet high by monkey barring across the water pipes. It, but here's the thing about the nitrous balloons, right? When you huff one, you have to you have to inhale this entire balloon right this huge mm-hmm. freaking balloon it, it, so it's, it's like, like a, a novelty sized balloon it's like a macy's float <laughs> <laughs> okay but but okay. halfway through inhaling this balloon you black out right okay. you have to have a spotter patrick was my spotter to <laughs> catch you literally because you just black out halfway through and your head drops and then one second later, you just pop back too. Well, yeah, because I mean, you're basically cutting off the oxygen oxygen to your brain. Is right, it, that's what's happening yep. essentially. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are basically whole, like cutting off the oxygen to your brain and then swinging across monkey bars. That's where we're at right now. Yep. But keep okay. in mind that we think the next day these guys are going to take us to this hidden place where they've seen this the rarest animal essentially on Earth. Right. right. They don't speak English. Right. We don't speak Vietnamese. Mm-hmm. So we're just kind of smiling at each other and they're (laughs) directing us to, they're pointing at the woman who's filling these nitrous balloons. Wow. And so we're like, crazy already. "Uh, 
you know, myself and Mitch and the, the rest of the crew are like, yeah, I don't think we really want to do a lot of nitrous tonight. <laughs> yeah. uh, but tonight. You, guys, you guys had no idea that this is what would be happening when you went with these guys initially. You were no. just like, okay. No, so no this, right. not even close. No. Okay. So I look at Forrest, I go, have you ever uh, done nitrous before? He goes, no, of course not. <laughs> like, all right, so... I'm not a car from Fast and the Furious, so no, no, I haven't had NOS. <laughs> we just start ripping these balloons, and then one at a time, start trying to crawl across these hot water pipes <laughs> that are literally, if you keep your hand on it for too long, your hand starts to burn. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is insane. And so then one at a time, just falling... Everyone's hurting their feet. It's so hurting, far. Twisting their ankles. Oh my god! This resulted in nothing, by the way. <laughs> well, the I moral mean, of the story is this yeah. didn't help us on our quest. It, it did it's, not. It's essentially like a it challenge in a Zelda game. I mean, <laughs> you know, but like a ridiculous Zelda game where you guys had to unlock the the palace or whatever, and then they were just fucking with you at the end of it. Is no, is they what took us. They took us out in the did. jungle. Uh, everyone got. Several hundred leeches on their bodies, Indeed. and we Real just went to an area where, situation. Uh, yeah, just went to an area where there was no animals whatsoever because they'd hunted them all. Right, Sand, pl- plus leeches. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What happened with the cobra? So we find this little island. We go to this island to see these monkeys, and Forrest is like pointing at the monkeys. We're looking at them. We're filming them, and, and, all and of they're sudden, making a ton of noise, right? Like they're yeah. they're they're making alert calls, so we know something weird is going on. And I'm telling telling Patrick, I'm telling the camera crew, I'm like something's something's up. Like these monkeys shouldn't be. The monkeys are making, suspicious of something. Well, they something's they shouldn't be on. screaming like this if there wasn't something going on. Right. There's nothing else around there. It's this little remote island, and all of a sudden, our uh, assistant camera guy Johnny just starts screaming behind me. Uh, I think he cried. Yeah, yeah he's he yelling, yeah. snake. I turn around to see him fall down <laughs> in this pile of leaves. Forrest takes off, runs past me, and there is a cobra, a fucking cobra. We ran in. I grabbed this cobra. It, it reared up. It was striking. It was huge. It was like a nine-foot-long monocled cobra. That's it's huge. Massive. I'm just it's saying, that's gigantic. Huge. Nine feet is huge. It was a big snake. Yeah. And it's striking and hissing and... It's even spitting venom and doing all the stuff. So in order to not get venom spat in my eyes or be injected by it, I asked Patrick for his T-shirt so I could cover its head. <laughs> now, I didn't want to pull off my shirt. had a microphone on it. This is very important. I'm a host. This is, <laughs> I'm number one here. Sure. So, can't, so, can't mess up so, the shot. That's right. So I say, Patrick, give me your shirt. So Patrick, in a flash, rips off his shirt. Looks great. I don't know Thank how you. he was so oiled up. Spray, yeah. spray tan. Yeah. Spray tan. Throws me a shirt. Nice. And, and I throw the, the shirt over the cobra's face. Now, of course, in doing this, the cobra just goes wild, starts striking, hissing, and biting Patrick's shirt over and over again. The short of the story is we, we moved the cobra, we let him go, all was fine, and I picked up Patrick's shirt to hand it back to him, and it's dripping in cobra venom. Sorry. <laughs> What'd you do with it? That's a fucking lie, sir. Literally, we finish, the cobra's, you know, disappears, we film it, we can't see it anymore. He just picks my shirt up off the ground and essentially spikes it into my face. <laughs> He's like, there's your shirt, bud. Uh, an interesting thing you told me before, don't they make like a type of liquor in Vietnam that has cobra venom in it? Snake wine. S- snake wine? Is that yeah. with cobra venom? Or? It is. And here's why. Because venom can be broken down by our stomach acids. So if you eat venom, it does nothing to you. But it if gets it you enters fucked into up, your though. no, no. Well, the wine does. The venom uh, does nothing. What's the point of having it in there? It fucks you up, dude. We drank it. Uh, you guys, you guys had yeah. it. Wait. So what did it feel like? Different, like drinking absinthe or something like that. I'm not someone who falls prey to the. I think it, so I feel it. Right, <laughs> right, like, right. You you don't fall for the pseudoscience. Not a big Chris, placebo effect. Yeah, no, placebo. I'm not a placebo guy. That's what it's called, scientist. <laughs> Sorry. That's why you're I, 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 mean, it, I, I mean, the think it, feel it method. Yeah, <laughs> please continue. I thought it was called thinky feely. Yeah. <laughs> um, so okay. Christina and I were in after this trip where you tried to kill me with the cobra. Um, <laughs> we went on a we went on a little like tourist vacation right. on this boat trip. Uh, and how long? How long, right? right? Yeah. yeah, it was great. So we ride down in this little village and there's this little pagoda and they're selling snake wine. Okay. It's noon, but whatever. Yeah. So You're in stu- Vietnam. Yeah. You just vacation. fought off a cobra and exactly. crocodiles. I'm, Man up, have I'm some tough. snake wine. Yeah, so we get the snake wine. I'm telling you, two shots of this stuff and it felt weird. It felt like a cross between alcohol and weed. 
Interesting. Yeah, it felt very strange. Was it good or bad? Would you do it, it again? It just tasted like uh, moonshine, you know? It tasted so it like tasted gasoline. horrible, but did it make you feel good or bad? Oh, really good. Happy, and did you see smiley. the snake in the bottle? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that is pretty dangerous. So you fought a crocodile, fought a cobra snake, and then you, you basically ate, well, you drank... It's baby. You said the baby was in the bottle. So yeah, it was a baby cobra. Are they venomous or no? Very much so. To be clear, cobras in Vietnam are farmed for that. Um, so so first right. of all, okay. Don't get me wrong. So I'm not promoting anybody just eating cobras or drinking them for that matter. But this is a sort of a sustainable way to do it. So before anybody judges too hard, just know that they're farmed for this in Vietnam. <laughs> Forrest, what was the first, the very first life or death situation you were in, and how old were you? Oh, man. Good question. The youngest one that I can recall was when I was probably about 12 years old. And it's a good age. It's a good pup, age. A yeah. young pup. Yeah, and it's right at that age where you're just cocky enough to do stupid things, but, <laughs> but young enough to not realize the gravity of what you're doing. Sure. Yeah. Real and, stupid, still real dumb. Right, yeah, and I've clearly grown out of that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, so I am uh, I had a little Pee Wee 50 motorcycle, and I lived on a farm in Zimbabwe at this point in my life. And um, I was down at the dam being a typical biology nerd and catching snakes and frogs and lizards and everything else, and I caught this snake called a rhombic night adder. Now, the rhombic night adder is a mildly venomous night adder, but to a 12-year-old boy, it can be quite lethal. Okay, so if that if that snake, let's say, bit a dog, the dog's dead. Dog would die. Okay. If it bit an adult man, he would be incredibly ill and possibly die. Right, but it bites a 80-pound child, bad stuff. It's not good. Okay, so, so you start handling it. So, of course, yeah, I pick up this rhombic night adder. I'm free handling it. It bites me on the wrist. Took all, of, took all of about 15 seconds. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> fortunately, like like a true nerd, I had my little field book with me. I circled where the bite was, and I wrote down the name of this the snake on my, on my wrist with my pen. Jumped on my motorcycle and started driving back towards uh, our farmhouse. Now, all I can remember was as I was driving, all of a sudden there were black rings in my vision, and it just started to tunnel and get more Oof. and more narrow. Well, and you were on the motorcycle? At going as fast as I could possibly go. And so what Oof. is that? Is that the blood vessels in your eyes restricting? What makes the vision tunnel out like I that? actually don't know. I think it was basically just the toxicity, uh, just sure. overall, just overcoming my all my senses. Yeah, I your, don't. your body's shutting down. Exactly. Slowly dying. Yeah. As you're going 70 miles an hour on the bike. As fast as I could go on my bike. Sure. And that, that's the at last... 12, by the way. 12. 12 years old. Yep. <laughs> and that's the last thing I remember is just my 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 vision tunneling, and uh, apparently I wrecked the motorcycle right by the compound where all the farm workers lived, and uh, they saw that, grabbed me, ran me up over their shoulders up to the house to my mom, where I had the snake's name written on my arm, and she took me to the hospital, and I was in a coma for two days. Woke up two days later, completely confused, but still. Very much so alive. Did it turn out that writing the name of the snake uh, allowed them to get you like the anti-venom? So that anti -venom? was anti-venom. Is that a word? That is what it's called. No. Yeah, it's not venom. Anti-venom. No, anti-venom. Wow, I'm an idiot. All right, carry on. <laughs> Let's leave, leave that in. Let's, I'm absolutely leaving. Let's, I'm not cutting anything out. This is un unedited. Did writing the name of the snake actually help you survive? Not in the sense that they were gave me anti-venom for the snake, but I think had I not done that, they wouldn't have known what the cause was because the bite was so small. It was just two little tiny puncture holes, and it could have been from anything. Right. When I crashed the motorcycle, I, I lost a bunch of skin, you know, just like road rash. Oh, so fuck. There was no way of knowing what it was from. They could have thought it was just me banging my head. So fortunately, be because I wrote the name of the snake on my arm, um, they put me on an IV, and I don't know what else, to be honest, because I was 12. Sure. But um, I, they didn't give me anti-venom, and I did make a full recovery. So was this well, your... mostly. I mean, mostly. You're, you're still not, you know, yeah. all there. Clearly yeah. brain damaged. <laughs> well, no, yeah. just a little bit. All right. So some news that really caught my attention. Did you hear about this obese owl? The obese owl. I heard about it because you texted me about it incessantly Dude. for about four days. <laughs> it makes no sense to me. Okay, explain this to me. So this, what's the story here? My understanding of it is there was an explosion of field mice in the UK. 
and and therefore so fat. I'm looking at him. He's gross. <laughs> she, she. She. Sorry. All right. So you've got mice. And these owls just engorge themselves to the point of being two thirds heavier than any other owl of their same species. But this owl that they caught was stuck in a ditch in a, a puddle. Yeah, it's it's grotesque. Imagine going to In and Out Burger and and eating three hundred In and Out <laughs> right. burgers and then not being able to get out of the gutter beside In and Out Burger. But see, the thing I don't understand about this is this is natural behavior. This is this this is human behavior in an owl. <laughs> it, I mean, it's definitely natural behavior. You know, it's it's uh, there's a term called henhouse syndrome where an animal has gets into the hen house and has as much prey as it wants, and in this case decided to just eat it all instead of just kill it all, and got so heavy that it literally couldn't fly, stuck in a ditch. Which then theoretically would have made the owl susceptible to predators. 100%. Yeah. So why would it do that? Shouldn't it know not to do that through like Well, natural- I mean, they're not all smart. Like, there's got he's probably just a really stupid owl, just like there's <laughs> dumb humans. I mean, the term bird brain comes to mind straight away. (laughs) We have so much time to talk bullshit when we're, you know, we've had so many long car rides and stuff like that. We always talk, you know, and all the guys who work on the show are huge animal nerds as well, which is part of what makes it so fun. We talk a lot about what's your favorite animal and shit like that always comes back to the octopus. The octopus, the alien octopus. Let's get into it. They're from out of space. What do you think? Ritab, let me let me lay this on you for a minute. Have you ever seen an octopus? Not in real life, no. You've never been to an aquarium guy? You're useless at that is, I, that I is is bonkers. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I have to be here to basically be the opposite of you two who are out there adventuring in, in the jungle and are you, shit. Are you familiar with the animal known as an octopus? I've never heard of it. No, I'm just kidding. Of course. Yes. It's got eight legs, octo. They have eight and legs. A pussy. They're Puss. tentacles. They have the ability to change the color of their skin, the texture of their skin. They have the same tasting abilities in each sucker, of which they have hundreds per arm on their legs. Where did this creature... They're not related to anything. Where did this creature come from? They have nine brains. So it's one central in the head, and each tentacle has its own brain. Plus three hearts. What Fuck off, octopus. Yeah. Well, what not a- from the earth, clearly. I so mean- here's the theory. Let me lay the theory on you, and you tell me what you think. The theory is that... On an asteroid, on a meteor that hit the ocean, mm-hmm. came this, s- not necessarily single-celled, but the simple-celled organism that crashed into the ocean, and the heat and power from that crash created the ancient version of an octopus. It's not been able to mate with anything, it's not been able to change, it's just been its own linear evolutionary creature that's created our modern day octopus the idea being that a, the, a meteor is comprised of frozen water right it froze because it's a simple or single-celled organism it can survive in the vacuum of space right. in frozen water crashes into the ocean obviously there's massive heat as it's coming through the atmosphere kick starts it, it a lot thaws. of different conditions the idea is that its dna sequence isn't related or traceable to any other animal on earth right it's a complete outlier it can look like a rock it can completely camouflage itself so forest have you heard about this experiment they did so they i'm not sure if it was octopus or cuttlefish okay um are all cephalopods related or no from far enough back they are so cephalopod is an order of different animals which is very very far back amazing (laughs) animal are they cuddly? Sorry. We'll put a link you're, in you're, the uh, you're, show notes. You're using D's where there are T's. It is a cuttlefish. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Cuttlefish. But so they did an experiment where they took a cuttlefish, which are a distant relative of the octopus, um, which they also changed their uh, color and uh, texture. Correct. They match their color and texture to whatever is behind them. Right. Right. So it's always been a little bit of a mystery because they can't see it. Their eyes are facing forward. And yet they're changing to what's in the background. So they put cuttlefish uh, in front of this fake false background in a complete vacuum of light. So it's completely pitch black. There is zero light seepage. Changed out the background, turned on the lights, and the cuttlefish had already changed to the background in a vacuum of light. Amazing. They have no idea how the fuck do colors. They think actually colors might have vibrations to them. I think I know. It's obviously an alien. Right? It's gotta be. (laughs) 
I don't know that I, that necessarily explains the biological phenomenon, but I like where your head's at. Thanks. The forest, yeah. as a as an actual scientist, we're buffoons. <laughs> as an actual scientist, w- do you believe the alien theory? So what you're describing is a thing called intelligent chromatophore. <laughs> Jeez, I've had a lot of white claws. Yeah, yeah, I'm calling it. I'm calling it myself. <laughs> what you're describing in the cuttlefish and the octopus in their skin is something called intelligent chromatophores. Okay. What that means is the skin itself is intelligent. It's able to pick up the color and change. Now that doesn't explain how it's able to do that without light. Mm. Whoa. But the fact that this creature has been able to evolve, whether it came as a single-celled organism from out of space or elsewhere, the fact that it's been able to evolve skin. That can change color on its own without thought is unbelievable. So the skin is not communicating with the brain. It doesn't need to. It could, just like the same if you pinch our skin, it hurts. Right. But it doesn't need to. You, It can just put its arm down on something and change to that color without its brain even being aware of it. I mean, it's got to be one of the craziest things in science. It's the craziest it, thing I've ever heard. Yeah, <laughs> right? Forget science. <laughs> is there any other animal that has intelligent chromatophores? So chameleons... Uh are notorious for changing color. Right. They have a similar system, but it's not necessarily an intelligent chromatophore. So they they need to visually see the color in order to change for it. So so the Yeah, so they're communicating with their brain. Correct. They're using their brain to match the color. They're fucking stupid compared to these guys. Compared to cephalopods, they're they're dunces. It's a garbage animal. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) When you look at a cephalopod and it changes colors, you're like, holy shit. When you look at a chameleon do it, you're like, that ain't shit. That's nothing. (laughs) Oh God. I I don't want you, Retep, to get a pet chameleon. Why not? You'll be popping it on the fucking television screen to see what it does. I wasn't thinking about it, but now I think I'm gonna do it on the way back on the way home what happens if you put a chameleon on a tv screen (laughs) (laughs) i don't think it could keep up why are humans so just vanilla we can't do much except for think well that's why yeah we've we've contributed all of our biological energy to our brains right we have large brains and useless bodies (laughs) (laughs) not me bro i've been uh, working out that's true have you ever seen a human baby they can't do anything but grow their brain that's it dude i have a 15 week old german shepherd it knows (laughs) almost as much as i do Uh, Patrick and I, along with the rest of our crew, spent two weeks trekking into the world's largest cave. Han Song Dong. Han Song Dong. Now, that sounds like I was being funny, but that's actually what it's called. No, you're just being racist. Yeah, very racist. (laughs) Yeah, nice. Fair enough. So one of our guides was the guy who found it, the the local hunter from the village, who found it in, I think, 97 or 98, and then... It took him 11 years to find it again. That's right. Wow. Uh, That's crazy. So we went in to look for an extinct animal because there's a rainforest growing in the middle of the cave. It's that big of a cave. It has its own entire weather system and ecosystems. Forest almost drowned. I, I did almost drown. This is going down into the cave. Because we're, we're filming the show. And Forrest wanted to bring his bag across this ice-cold cave lake under under one ground river i mean this lake is so fucking cold Mm -hmm. that you can't you know your bones don't work it's water water that's never seen sunlight so i'm like i go to hand forest a life jacket and he looks at me and he says if you don't take that life jacket back i'm never gonna talk to you again (laughs) exact words so i had my backpack filled with Heavy batteries, flashlights, everything else you need in a cave. So I decided to tread water across the lake with my backpack. <laughs> everything you need except for the life vest. Exactly. Sans <laughs> yeah. life vest. And I decided to tread water uh, with my backpack over my head across the lake, which worked for approximately eight feet of the 300-foot lake crossing. <laughs> Dude, it's like literally 52 degrees. <laughs> It's so cold. I don't think people really understand how cold 52 degree water is. Like that that's freezing. freezing. Yeah. As Patrick said, I nearly drowned. I started sinking. Um, it was so cold. I couldn't hold the weight of my backpack up any longer. And I looked at Patrick. We made eye contact. And I can tell you, there was there was a moment where we understood each other perfectly. Oh, yeah. Because Just by the eye contact. By the eye contact. Because Patrick could tell I was about to die, but he could also tell that if he had told anyone to help me, I would have been livid. 
the camera guys all started looking at me. Yeah. Like, sh- is it time to put the camera down and help? <laughs> and I was just shaking my head like, no, don't, no. no. This is great. This is great. No, keep it rolling. Yeah. yeah. And so he at least document. <laughs> That's your job. Right. Uh, and so Forrest makes it across after his near death experience. And he gets up onto the rocks, plays Panting. it off, walks out of the frame. <laughs> We've got the shot. Good, good. Uh, and that's go, all that really matters at soaking the end of the wet, day. Goes over, starts setting up his tent, strips his freezing cold clothes off. And I went over to talk to him about something, and he's just sour. <laughs> and I was like, oh, he's pissed because he almost just fucking died. <laughs> but he would have been more pissed had you come oh, to I the rescue. Him. I was like, should I have sent someone in? And he's like, I, I would have quit the show if you sent someone in. <laughs> and we are wrapping up our show, The Wild Times. It oh has my God, indeed... It's been- <laughs> been a wild time. so wild <laughs> if uh if you've enjoyed listening to it go to itunes leave us a review uh everybody that leaves us a review leave us a comment and if you give us a comment we will pick a random winner from all those that comment and that winner will get a hundred dollar gift card to cool that's k-u-h-l cool they mm. make outdoor clothing they the are best ready. shit it's the best it's hands yeah. down the best outdoor gear there is Yep. Um, and you're going to want to wear it so that you look like uh, your hero, Patrick DeLuca. Yeah, for sure. And That's a good idea. And if you feel like it, vote for my animal, which would clearly win the owl with the viper head and the rat you tail. Just say bat. fucking weird, man. Just say bat. Yeah, you, just it's kidding. a bat with a rat tail. You fuck. All right. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Wild time.